Yo, 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 check it out. Check it out. Right. Yo, 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 it's your boy Von Keith. Stay in hustle mode. Got some brand new clothes. Hit them with a pose. Check what I just drove. My car don't test the road. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Von Keith, the artist, coming all the way live, bringing you another top tier hair club tutorial, okay? So, this main focus of the video is showing you how to do a hook part. We're also going to be showing you how to do a mid drop fade. So, let's start off by taking this 18 skip tooth blade. It's detachable, it's on my Andy's Super ZRs, okay? Now, you see how them things are just snipping off the hair just like butter? That's because these are sharpened. Thanks to my guys at Mr. Supply Guy out here in Duluth, Georgia. So we're just going to go ahead and just knock down the hair. Shout out to my homegirl Kai in the background. We was having a great conversation. But yeah, man, these, these attachable blades, they're really good for stuff like this, man. Just knocking down the hair. It really makes my job as a barber a lot easier. You know, don't get me wrong. The guards, they work as well, but... When you're really trying to get through some hair, when you're trying to get through a fade, those attachables, man, they really, they work wonders and they save your fingers a lot, a lot of work. Okay, moving along, we have that tap and go hairline spritz by the one and only top tier hair club. That's my brand. So this 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 spritz is very good because you can spray it all over the head. You see, I'm spraying it on the designated area where the part is going to be. I'm gonna let it air dry. I'm taking my Rhino comb by Murano and I measured out his vertical bars. Why? His vertical bars are very, very light and they're very, very short. Okay, so he wants his fade to be stretched and he wants a drop fade so in order for me to actually measure the fade out it has to be measured because if it isn't i don't know i might go up a little too high because sometimes you can get lost in your fades especially when you're thinking that the fade is going to be at a certain place and my eyes are very accustomed to having clients who have longer vertical bars it's not too often you get someone with short vertical bars or with a smaller forehead. All right, so you see, I just took my one and a half guard by wall and I just went against the grain on the hairline just to just to taper the hair down a little bit because with someone with coarse hair, wavy hair, um, the hair tends to coil up on the hairline. Now we're just going to go ahead and razor in these vertical bars as well. You see, even when I wipe away, that line is still there because that razor is that sharp, okay? And that's due to that hairline spritz, making that skin very stiff and also making the hair very stiff, okay? Now I'm taking my TY blades by Wall. These are sharpened and modified, y'all. Shout out to my boy Clipper Grinder. These things are snipping that hair. And hey, like I said, the hairline spritz is going to work wonders for you. And it's not chalky. It's not flaking up or anything. Look at my strokes. Look at the angle of my blades. Look, I even had to take my comb just to taper down that. See, that's what I was talking about. Taking your comb and tapering down that extra hair. Because you see in the corner, the hair is a little bit lighter. So I did want to try to match it and make it as even as possible because my client isn't getting any enhancement. All right, so we're just going to raise it down. Make the hairline look a lot cleaner. We're going to hit the vertical bar again. Now let's move along to the other side. Now you see how my client's head is tilting. This is very imperative for barbers, man. Make sure y'all are positioning your client's head, but don't just yank the head. You see how I softly just push his head over, just nudge him a little bit. That, that helps with the experience because your client has his eyes closed most, closed most of the time, especially if you're not talking to with them. I'm sorry, if you're not talking with them. So they trust you. So you don't want to just be yanking their head or pushing their head all over the place, you know? Now with me positioning his head correctly, you see how straight the hairline is starting to look. Now I did tilt his hairline back, I did tilt his head back down because now I have to install the part. Now you see I'm starting with my blades upside down. Now when you're doing these hook parts, the secret to it is starting off flat up top and then just meeting that curve from where the hairline is all right let's comb out when you're doing a part make sure you're combing as you go because you can the hair can manipulate you and you'll think you'll have a very sharp line and then you keep tapping it you just you're just snipping away more hair 
even when you have spritz or any you know got to be glued whatever you're using even when the hair is stiff still comb that hair through all right now after you lay your line in in order to widen your part a little bit but still keep it sharp this this is when you want to use your razor okay this is when you want your finger and your wrist game to really be working really well because if you razor it and the part becomes too wide hey man i don't know what to tell you you might have to just enhance it you know <laughs> Right now, just cleaning up again with my detailers. Now you want to take your sharpest tool, your, your sharpest trimmers when you're doing parts. Okay, always use your sharpest trimmers. All right, now that's a nice hook part. Now let's go ahead and start this fading process. Once again, we're taking our 18 skip tooth because we're going to go ahead and debulk the hair on the side. The reason why I'm taking my 18 skip tooth is because his hair, especially towards the back of his head, going towards his occipital bone, is very, very thick and it lays close to his head. Now you see the hair closer to the vertical bar, it's very, it's, it's very loose, it's kind of bushy. So this is the hard part about fading this client's head. This is why I wanted to do the video as well, because I want you to see not every fade is going to be perfect. So it's up to us as barbers to make the hair come to to make the haircut come together but also try to make the hair do what you want it to do you have to train that hair now it's up to the client as well to do their due diligence at home as far as brushing their hair moisturizing it you know laying it down doing doing what they're supposed to do but you know when when you go about two months without a haircut it's only so much you can do now i'm taking my coco hair pros my number one guard and we're just going to go ahead and go up on that fade the level was open especially on especially on the area I just hit by the vertical bar. I'm just screen scrubbing through this process. You know, I do have plenty of tutorials on phase, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not breaking the whole fade down. This is my half guard by Coco Hair Pros. You see, I'm taking my time, especially in that area right there, man. That area is very, very soft. It's very fragile. So you don't want to just go too hard in it. And the hair, it cuts a lot different closer to the vertical bar versus the hair closer to the back of his head this is what makes this fade very hard so your blend game has to be on point now i'm taking my masters that lever is all the way open nope it didn't want to focus oh well it's okay that's why i'm here to explain it for y'all now the masters is bringing that fade all together as you can see and it's okay my client yeah he is a little lighter tone don't you know, don't think just because his skin is turning red that I was trying to whip him up. He just has very, very sensitive skin. That's why he did come to me as well, because he was like, man, a lot of barbers used to scar him a lot more than what he was used to because he understands he has sensitive skin. That's why I start the vertical bars off with the razor. OK, that fade is clean. It just needs just a little more detail work. But moving along, we're starting from somewhere, you know. All right, we put that do rag on. We laid that hair down with that with that top tier hair club icy blue foam wrap and some of that wave pomade. I did hit him with the white pencil because, like I said, with my with my clients with a lighter skin tone, I want the pencil to stand out just enough. And I also have to see the hairline come together, especially with his vertical bars being so soft and so light. I still need to see if the hairline. Well, I need to see exactly how even the hairline is. I know the hairline is even. Now you see, I tilted my client's hair down just to make sure i can see the hairline fully especially in the camera just to make sure both points are matching up i want to see that hook part looking very curved very crispy but i don't want it looking like a j hook or anything all this is just cleanup work that's all it is yes indeed man this this haircut came out very very clean and this was before the fade now this is after the fade and this is on that right side that's one thing i love about these andy's masters man they're really really good for cleanup work don't get me wrong they're also good for fading as well but when it comes to cleaning up your fades touching up everything making everything come together that's what those masters come in handy for okay and I'm only using the lever open or I'm going to that second notch of the lever. That's it. All right, we're going to hit him with the oil sheen. This haircut is clean, man. Wipe the forehead off a little bit. 
know, you don't want them looking all extra greasy and shiny when they're going outside in the sunlight. My client likes it. He rocks with it. That's a nice haircut, y'all. And we out. Stay in hustle mode. Got some brand new clothes. Hit them with a pose. Check what I just drove. My car don't touch the road.